let's review for your first force laws exam. Uh, throughout this unit, we studied the four fundamental forces, which are gravitation, the electric force, the strong nuclear force, and the weak nuclear force. Remember that both gravity and the electric force act over an infinite distance. They're proportional to the distance squared. Remember that the strong nuclear force only acts over a very, very short distance, and the weak nuclear force is even shorter still. Uh, we started out by discussing the idea of gravitation, an idea from Isaac Newton. Uh, gravity is caused by the mass of both objects, so we call that M1, M2. If you double one mass, you double the force of gravity. If you double both the masses, then you quadruple the force of gravity, so you double it twice, in essence. Remember that gravity gets smaller with increased distance. It's actually depending on the distance squared. So if you double the distance, you quadruple the distance squared, which means your force of gravity would be one-fourth of what it was before. If you triple the distance, 3 squared would be 9, so FG would be divided by 9. Um, gravity is always attractive because there's only one kind of mass. If there were more than one kind of mass in the universe, then gravity would be really different. So since there's only one kind of mass, gravity is always attractive. Gravity is a very weak force. The only object that has enough mass for you to notice its gravity is the Earth. The sun and the moon have some very, very small effect on the Earth, but not really on you. So in general, gravity is a very weak force. The constant g, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, very, very small number. Um, remember, that was measured by Mr. Cavendish, and you do need to know the Cavendish experiment. Um, in our equation, force of gravity between two objects is g times m1, m2 over the distance squared. Don't forget that the distance in there is squared. We talked a little bit about orbits of planets and moons and things like that. Remember that the orbit of a planet is elliptical, an idea that was discovered by Kepler. Draw a simple picture of like the moon going around the Earth. Remember it moves in an ellipse, so at one point it's really far away. That point is referred to as apogee. And at the other end of the ellipse, it's really close to the Earth. That point is referred to as perigee. Remember at perigee, the moon or satellite, or whatever you're talking about, is moving really, really fast. And at apogee, it's moving really slow. You do need to know those things. A geosynchronous orbit, like what we use for TV satellites, means that the satellite has the same period as the Earth, which is 24 hours. It's useful for communications and TV satellites, because we always want them to be of a fixed position relative to the Earth. So if I put a satellite dish on the roof of my house, it can always point at the same spot in the sky and not have to move around. After we finished the gravitational force, we discussed the electric force. Remember that the electric force depends on the charge of both objects, not the mass. Um, but it has the same relationship. You double one charge, you double the electric force. If you double both charges, you quadruple the electric force. Remember that the symbol for charge is a Q. You can use either capital or lowercase. And that the unit is the Coulomb. Coulomb is the unit for charge. Same relationship with distance. Gets smaller with increasing distance squared. So again, you double the distance. D squared is quadrupled. Your electric force is one-fourth as big. So that's the same relationship as gravity. Um, the electric force can be attractive or repulsive. The reason is that there are two kinds of charge. So if you have like charges, they're going to repel each other. Opposite charges are going to attract each other. That's a rule we need to remember. So I'll ask you questions like, which direction is the force on this charge? Or I'll give you the direction of the force and ask you what kind of charge it is. The electric force is very strong. But most objects that we deal with are neutral overall. That doesn't mean they don't have any charge. It means the positives and negatives are balanced. The electric force is most important on the small scale, like the atomic scale. Protons and electrons attracting each other is what causes the chemical bonds. That's why the electrons stay in the atom. Um, Remember the constant 9 times 10 to the 9th, and the equation is very similar. The only difference is that at g you have that constant k, 
and instead of M's you have Q's for charge. One thing that is kind of difficult to understand, especially if we don't understand that every object has charge, even if it's neutral overall, is the process of induction, where you separate charges indirectly. So two examples we saw in our lab. We took an aluminum can, which of course has positive and negatives uniformly distributed through it, and we brought a negatively charged rod close by. What that does is it separates the charge. The positives go towards the rod, the negatives go away from the rod. That's referred to as induction. And so the force on the negatives and the force on the positives, which you see here, are not balanced because the positives are all closer than the negatives. Since they're closer, the force is bigger. Remember, it depends on distance. So the net effect is the can rolls towards the rod. If you were to cut the can in half while the rod was there, you would have half a can positively charged, the other half negatively charged. The other example we need to remember is the electroscope. Again, it starts out with an equal number of positive and negative charges spread out evenly throughout it. When the negatively charged rod is brought near, the positives go to the top and the negatives go to the bottom. They're induced to separate. Because the bottom part are both negative, both leaves are negative, they repel each other. We, so we see them spread apart, like we did in our lab. The last force we looked at were the nuclear forces. The most important one was the strong nuclear force, which hold protons and neutrons together, which overcomes the electrostatic repulsion of proton-proton interaction. makes the nucleus of an atom stable. Remember, it's very short-ranged, and so there's a limit as to how big a nucleus of an atom can be because the nuclear force eventually will drop off and go to zero, but the electric force can extend over an infinite distance. So if we kind of drew a picture of an atom, the electric force would tend to repel protons and push them apart. It's the nuclear force that holds protons and neutrons together to keep the nucleus of the atom stable. Otherwise, it would fly apart and none of us would exist because we wouldn't have any big molecules. The weak nuclear force is what actually holds a proton or a neutron together. The building blocks of those are referred to as quarks. You don't need to know that. What you do need to know, the question that will be on your test, is that the weak nuclear force allows neutrons to turn into protons or protons to turn into neutrons. Um, which happens spontaneously to make the nucleus more stable. A couple other things before your test. You need to be able to explain the can and the electroscope from your lab. We talked about that just a minute ago. You need to understand why Newton thought that there was a force on the moon due to the Earth. We went through that thought process together in class. Remember, if there wasn't a force on the moon, it would continue in a straight line. It wouldn't go around the Earth. So since Newton knew the law of inertia, he knew there had to be a force acting on the moon. We need to know the Cavendish experiment, where he hung the barbell from a thin thread and used another um, set of masses to make it move due to the gravitational force, measured the constant big G, couple things about calculators. A lot of scientific notation in this unit. Remember we use the EE key, which is right above the comma. So if you wanted to put in the number 9 times 10 to the 9th, you would press 9 second EE, and then the exponent is 9. If you use times 10 and then the caret, you're going to make mistakes. Other thing to remember, order of operations. We seem to mess this up quite a bit during this unit. If you have something where you have two numbers on bottom of a fraction bar, remember to press the divide key in between each of them. So something like 2 times 6 over 3 times 4, you would enter as 2 times 6 divide 3 divide 4. Should give you 1. Um, if you get something different than that when you enter that into a calculator, you're doing something wrong and you need to fix it before your test. Hopefully this review has been useful. If you have any other questions, as always, please come see me. We can work together to figure it out.